to show thyself a workman that is approved. You don't want to be ashamed before him at that judgment day, at that judgment seat of Christ. Praise wonderful name. But you want, like Paul, you say, I know that there is a crown waiting for me. Because you are not hitting around the air. You knew what you are doing. Amen. Let us go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And the Lord whom ye seek shall surely come to his temple. Amen. Even the messenger of the covenant. Those are two people coming. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. There's a messenger that is coming to prepare the way and there's a messenger of the covenant. Amen. Praise God. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, said the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Verse 2. Now let us go to Malachi 4 from verse 4. 
make me start from verse 1 and then I'll jump to verse 4. Malachi 4 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, all that do wickedly shall be stumbled. And the day that cometh shall burn, that's judgment, praise God, Amen. shall burn them up, say the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Praise God. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, for all Israel, with the statutes and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and the great dreadful day of the Lord. Praise the wonderful name. When Elijah is coming, judgment is coming. Praise God. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Praise God. May have your seats. You can also turn the book of John. John chapter 1, verse 29. The day, the next day, John seeing Jesus coming unto him, said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes or taketh away the sin of the world. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So here we are seeing God communicating. The last communication of God in the book of Malachi. Before a long period of silence, is that God is going to send them a messenger. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Not just a messenger. This messenger that God is going to send them is going to prepare a way for him when he comes. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we see that these people, they can't be saved until they see these two messengers. Right. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They have connected their work and their salvation and their redemption to see these two people coming in, in their territory. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And every Jew, every Israelite is under an expectation to see two people coming for them. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They are not looking for salvation as it were. Because salvation is coming after these two people come. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Despite the challenges that they will go through, they have hope Amen. that one day a person will rise up. Amen. One day a messenger will come. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because this is the last communication God has communicated. Amen. You can imagine four centuries of silence. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can imagine that. 100 years passes, God does not talk. Another 100 years pass, God does not talk. Another 100, God does not talk. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Another 100, there is no communication from God. Amen. But when you tell a person, when did the last time God spoke? He said, I remember. I remember he said, a messenger will come. Amen. Are you waiting for him? Yes, I'm waiting for him. But a messenger must first come. Amen. Praise Amen. the wonderful name. Amen. So it was in the hearts of every Israelite, every Jew, that for him to come, there has to be a one coming to prepare the way. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So for that period of silence, they always had scribes read, reading these scrolls for them. There were, no, there were no books like this. No, these are compiled books. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. It's quite easier to carry and so on. So, but in those days, they just used to carry scrolls. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So you can, you can realize, you can find a scroll of Samuel, a scroll of Isaiah, a scroll of Jeremiah, a scroll of Nahum, a scroll of Habakkuk. And these scrolls are not with everyone. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They, were, they were with the people that were called scribes. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we realize now, when these people are in silence, they are under an expectation. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. When these people are in silence, they are under an expectation. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And as we are going to see it today, they were waiting on something. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. As we are going to see it, they were waiting upon something. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They were waiting to see a messenger, and they were waiting to see the Lord himself coming. Amen. They were waiting to see the king coming. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And today I want us to share on Elijah and the coming king. 
Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Elijah and the coming kingdom. Mm -hmm. Praise the wonderful name. These two were connected. Praise God. Amen. Last Sunday we shared about the similarity between John the Baptist and Samuel. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And when we looked at their similarity, we realized that when Samuel came, the kingdom came. Amen. Is that true? Amen. And now we are realizing that also in due time, God injected Elijah in the kingdom program. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. At first when we saw Samuel and the kingdom coming, we never saw Elijah at that place. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But when we entered into the book of Kings, Elijah the prophet came. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And God injects another program in his kingdom that before I come, Elijah must come. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. But remember in the book of Samuel, he told David, out of thy loins, I'm going to find myself a king. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So everyone is just waiting for a king. They all knew that from the tribe of David, from the tribe of Judah, the house of David, a king is going to come. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But they didn't know Elijah will precede the king until Malachi communicated. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So they used to wait for a king. They used to wait for a king to come and rule over them. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But later, through the communications of prophets, because God told them that I will surely hide nothing from you. Amen. If I have a desire to communicate to you, Amen. I'm going to use Amen. prophets. Amen. And these people are going to, to regard their prophets because they understood that these prophets were, they carried the words of God. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because when a prophet came, he came thus saying, the Lord. And later in the book of Malachi, a prophet comes and gives us a communication. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So from that time, these people that were waiting for a king, they now have another thing added to it. Praise the wonderful name. Not just a king, there's a messenger that will come and prepare a way for a king. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. There is a messenger that will come and prepare a way for a king. Amen. Remember, me and you had no king to wait for. Amen. That normal Israelite, that normal Jew, knew he was not complete until the messenger comes and a king comes. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But you and me today, we are complete in him. Amen. We are waiting for nobody. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But they are waiting for somebody. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But me, I'm waiting for nobody. Amen. I'm just waiting for the Lord himself to descend. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And we, which are alive, Amen. shall be changed in a moment. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But you see, for them, there has to be an appearance. Yes. He said, unto them that look for him, Amen. he shall appear. Yeah. His appearance is for salvation. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because these people are under chastisements. Mm -hmm. These people are under judgments. Mm -hmm. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They have been rooted out of their promised land. Yes. Assyrians took them out. Babylonians took them out. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And Daniel had a plan. When Daniel had a vision, he saw them under Gentile dominion. Amen. Praise the wonderful Amen. name. Amen. The book of Daniel begins with God's people under Gentile dominion. But it ends with God now going back and telling them, I'll remove you out. Amen. I'm going to give you times for a time again you'll come back and be overcomers. Praise Amen. the wonderful name. Amen. So we see when these people from the time of Joshua when they when they ruled the land, one has fear Amen. Amen. By the time we read the book of Kings, they have been taken away from that land. The land that they were blessed. The land that God gave them. The land that Joshua was there dividing for them. Praise the wonderful name. By the time we come in the, in, in the, to the King Joachim, in the times of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is crying. Why is there a book of lamentation in the Bible? Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because this person is weeping when these people are going into captivity. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But they are going in that place with the hope. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. That I have a future and a hope for you. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Plan to give you an expected end. Amen. And while while they are in those 
while they are in uh, I don't know how you call it while they are in captivity Daniel is there Ezekiel is there who who are the captive nana unajua nani na bibi mwingine wao wakati Jeremiah was there is that true and then after a period of time a commandment was issued they came out praise on the full name Amen. but they are coming to rebuild Jerusalem praise on the full name Amen. not just to rebuild Jerusalem Malachi 3 says that the Lord whom he seek Amen. is going to come into that temple Amen. praise on the full name Amen. you're not just building a temple you're not just restoring Jerusalem and its walls no you are restoring it so that the king himself can now come and dwell in it Amen. Amen. Name. Amen. so all of them are under that expectation that Amen. the king is coming Amen. Do, are the walls restored yes Amen. under the times of Nehemiah the walls were restored Amen. praise on the name was the temple built yes it was built in troublous time Amen. 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 but they are waiting for something Amen. the lord the king must come Amen. praise on the name Amen. even Haggai told them The glory of this temple yes. shall be glo- shall be Amen. much much greater Amen. than the glory of the latter. Amen. These people are under expectation. Amen. But you know what? Ma- Elijah has to come fast. fast. When Malachi is coming, he's coming to a people that are are double minded. Mm-hmm. They are they are not giving God praise on a full name. Amen. They are asking where have we heard the Lord? Mm-hmm. They are even putting God in a pedestal mm-hmm. that you say we've heard the Lord, mm-hmm. you've said you've stole from God. Mm-hmm. Where? Praise on the full name. Amen. They are now compl- they, they are now they are trying to make good God look like he's lying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Praise Amen. on the full name. Amen. These Amen. people are rebellious mm-hmm. because they, they some some were rich among themselves. Yes. Look at us, we are prospering. Mm-hmm. But the faithful ones are also complaining again. How come those that are not keeping the commandments of God are succeeding? Yes. Praise on the full name. Amen. Now by that prosperity, they think God was with them. Praise on the name. Now they could have a, a, they, they thought they could come to a place now they could question God. Amen. That where have we heard him? Where have we stolen from him? Yes. Praise on the name. So now but they, they some are prospering. But they were the faithful ones. Amen. That were they were singing the song for that alone. Mm-hmm. That song it says then do we wonder why others prosper living so we can year after year. That was that was Malachi. Mm-hmm. But God said I'm coming to burn them. Amen. I'm coming to burn these people. Sure. I'm coming for a judgment again. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But before I come for judgment, I have a prophet of justice. Amen. I have my own prophet of justice. Amen. And that is Elijah. Amen. Elijah is a prophet that comes with the justice of God. Sure. In the midst of apostasy, mm-hmm. Elijah always comes. Yes. And he says before I come, I'll send him. Amen. And he's going to show you when I come. Praise on the name. Amen. That is now when God communicated in Malachi. He says, "Behold, I sent you Elijah. Behold, I sent you Elijah the prophet." Mm-hmm. So every Jew is waiting for the appearance of Elijah. Amen. Every Jew was waiting for that appearance of that man. Mm-hmm. And remember, it is a burden of Malachi to Israel. Amen. Praise on the name. Amen. Not to us Gentiles. Mm-hmm. It is a burden of Malachi to Israel. God had a burden. God gave Malachi a burden. And that burden that God communicated from through the mouth of Malachi was for Israel. Praise on the name. And now when Malachi wrote that that scribe, he scribed it down, it was written and it was stored. So you can imagine now, these people when they go to a uh, A, 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 a Saturday or a Friday evening not a, let me not say a Sunday they used to begin the Sabbath on a Friday evening, praise the wonderful name Amen. they used to go there and then a, a scribe would read it unto them that behold Elijah will come Amen. and then they go home they say Amen, Amen. praise the wonderful name Amen. so everyone, every, every, they always say teach your children hang them on the walls praise the wonderful Amen. name everyone knew Elijah is going to come, come. praise the wonderful name Amen. and now they go and then they are waiting for an appearance yes. they are waiting for someone to come Amen. because that appearance is connected with restoration Amen. praise on the full name Amen. when that man comes because Elijah is a prophet of restoration yes. praise god Amen. so when Elijah is going to come they are going to go back to where David was Amen. 
because God has given them a foretaste yes. of how the kingdom is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So every Israelite, every Jew is admiring the reign of David. Amen. They always say we want to go back to when David was a king. Amen. Praise Amen. wonderful name. Amen. So they want to be restored. Yes. They want to be restored and the only no way we are going to be restored Elijah must come. come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's the only way they are going to be restored. And that's how God had a plan to bring them back. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And these poor scattered. Some, some, were in, some were in the northern kingdom, some were in the southern kingdom. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They had troubles, different kind of troubles. But they had that expectation in them. And a normal Jew waits for two people. Exactly. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. A Jew only waits for two people. Amen. Elijah and Elijah will show them the son of David, who is the king. Amen. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. I repeat, a Jew is waiting for an Elijah mm -hmm. who is going to show them the son of David, who is going to be the, the king. king. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So they can't know who that king is mm -hmm. until Elijah shows them. And Amen. the devil knows that. Amen. That is why the devil is going to come and become an Elijah Amen. and point them to the Antichrist. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So the devil knows that. Yes. So you realize now when these people are waiting for an Elijah, someone somewhere in the wilderness of Judea starts preaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just the Amen. things are just going normal. Yes. And then they just hear that there is someone in the wilderness of Amen. Judea starting to preach. Amen. Until people from Jerusalem sent priests to that man. Amen. Praise the wonderful Amen. name. Amen. Because they have stayed a long time without the glory of God. Amen. And when they send this pastor to that pastor, they start asking questions. Are you the one? Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Who are you? Who are you? Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because they know their salvation is connected with knowing Elijah who will show them the king that is coming. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Remember my title, Elijah and the coming king. Amen. You cannot know the king until you know Elijah. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because the only way to know who he is, Elijah will show you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And now they are knowing that everyone is waiting for the king. Yes. The woman at Samaria was waiting for the king. Mm -hmm. Every one of them is waiting for the king. But Elijah must come. Because that king was the Messiah. That king was going to bring a righteous reign. Mm -hmm. That king was going to take them, was going to bring them to a place of prosperity. Amen. A place where they are going to be ahead of all nations. Mm -hmm. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And you realize now, when, when they are coming, when Hebrews 9.28 9, talks about that, unto them that look for him. If he's going to appear unto them that look for him, these people are not saved. In Hebrews 9.28, yes. he says he shall appear unto them for the second time unto salvation. Amen. Amen. Meaning Amen. the first time they were not saved. Yes. But if he's going to appear to them, Amen. it's for salvation. Amen. Then these people must have eyes to see. Amen. Because he told them that until yes. you shall not see me henceforth. Amen. Until you start saying, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. That includes Elijah. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They have to see that future Elijah that is coming Amen. to them. Amen. But you see, when now they start hearing a man, because when Elijah is in the wilderness, not when this dawn is preaching in the wilderness, they go and look at him. They start describing his dress. <laughs> Praise on the name. I think I will, let me read that for you. I, I, I'll get it in Matthew chapter chapter 3. Are you there with me? Amen. Amen. Let us read together. Let us understand what the, the Bible is saying. Matthew chapter 3. Amen. Wherever you are, just move slowly to Matthew 3. Godfrey, I request you read it for me, please. Matthew chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is he 
that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Saying, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, uh -huh. prepare ye the way of the Lord, Amen. make his path straight. Amen. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair uh -huh. and a leathern girdle uh -huh. about his loins, uh -huh. and his meat was locust uh -huh. and wild honey. Why does the Bible say that? Because that's how Elijah used to dress. He <laughs> prayed for the Amen. That's why the Spirit was saying it like that. Because when you go in the book of Kings, that is how Elijah was dressed. Amen. And when the Spirit is saying it like that, it wants you to see this is that Elijah. Amen. And he's in the wilderness like Elijah. Yes. He's eating honey like Elijah. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So this man that is in the wilderness is another Elijah that is coming. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And when Elijah is coming, judgment should follow. Sure. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So now, when this, remember, let me tell you something. This Matthew that is writing it is a little flock. Now let, me, let me bring it to context for you. When Jesus came, they received him. Not everyone received him. Praise the wonderful name. Not everyone received him. And the one that is writing this gospel are among the people that received him. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And he is qualifying the reason why they received Jesus. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because these statements are going to be used against them again. When he comes the second time. Amen. Because they are going to say, he came. Mm -hmm. But he say, and Elijah came, but you did not know him. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Now, when now Matthew 3 is being, when God is reading for us Matthew 3, he's giving now a narration that Elijah is coming. Amen. Why is he saying that? Why is he talking about the raiment? Because the king is going to follow. Amen. And they are going to enter into Jerusalem. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Now you can, you can continue reading. Verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him to Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region around about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to him, come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Amen, amen. Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Amen. And this key and think not so say within yourself. We have Abraham to our father. Praise the wonderful name. So when John is when Matthew is describing John the Baptist, is describing him as Elijah. Praise the wonderful name. So this was Elijah that is to come. In those days came John the Baptist saying, He is the messenger. Praise the wonderful name. And when and, and when you go to there's a place in, in Matthew chapter chapter eleven. Eh? Let me read it for you. Matthew chapter eleven. Verse ten. But when verse let me start from verse Verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went he out into the wilderness to see? So John was in the wilderness like Elijah. Praise the wonderful name. He never used to, to live in the cities. He used to live in the wilderness. Praise the wonderful name. A reed shaken with wind, but what went he out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that were soft, they that are with soft clothing are in king's houses. Yes. But what went he out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say unto you, more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, Amen. which shall prepare the way before thee. Amen. So God is confirming that John is Malachi. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. So, 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 he's in the wilderness like Elijah. Praise the wonderful Amen. name. Reminding these people of where God met them. Praise the wonderful name. Because God had also a covenant with them in the wilderness. Praise the wonderful name. That is why he has to come from the wilderness. So when Jesus is telling these people, this John is that messenger that is going to come. Praise God. When now they are going to pray, thy kingdom come. That prayer includes Elijah in it. Praise the wonderful name. Because the kingdom cannot come until Elijah comes. Praise the wonderful name. When Elijah comes, the king comes, and the kingdom comes. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So they're saying, our father, pray like this. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. In that thy kingdom come, Elijah is in it. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They need to pray to see that Elijah. Amen. Praise God. Because when they see that Elijah, they know the kingdom is nigh. And when John the Baptist is preaching now, notice, he's preaching, the kingdom has come. He's preaching, the time has arrived. Amen. The kingdom is at hand. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And now when the kingdom has, has arrived, it is at hand. Jesus comes. That is why I read for you, John. Chapter 1, verse 29. Mm -hmm. To show you that this Elijah was pointing a people to the lamp that was coming. Amen. That was his work. Amen. To introduce the Messiah. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And now when Jesus was coming, he said, Behold! Mm -hmm. People are there. People are there. Yes. There was an audience there. Yes. There were witnesses in that place. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And then he says, Behold! Amen. Behold! Amen. The lamp of God. Amen. That is the person in whom I they asked him, why are you baptizing? He said, I'm just baptizing with water. Amen. But there is someone that is coming Amen. that is greater than me, Amen. that is going to baptize with fire. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. I want you to watch this role that John is playing. Because he's going to come back again. Amen. And the devil is going to use it for his own benefit. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. These things are not just written just you can pass by. No, 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 no. So John finds himself in prison. Before John finds himself in prison, when Jesus is coming, and Jesus is being born. Mm -hmm. It is the king of the Jews. Amen. That was what was inscribed yes. even when he was dying. Mm -hmm. Are you a Jew today? No. But why was this written the king of the? Jews. The king of the? Jews. The king of the? Jews. They were waiting for a king. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Even remember, okay. Now when that king is coming, Gentiles came with gifts. That was the place of Gentiles at that time. Amen. The only way these Gentiles, no matter how much they loved that king, mm. the only way you are going to receive a blessing was bless the king. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So wise men from the east came yes. and they came with gifts. Yes. Because that was what was written in Genesis 12. Amen. Those that bless you, I will bless Amen. them. That was how Gentiles were to be saved. Amen. Through blessing the king of Israel. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. There was no other way they were going to be saved. But they have to come through Israel. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Now when now when, when now Jesus is growing and John has pointed and said, Behold, the king. People moved. People followed John. No, not John. People followed Jesus. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And somehow John is in prison. And John does not understand why he's in prison and that he was the messenger of the king. Because John cannot understand why is the kingdom coming and I'm in prison. Mm -hmm. And until he starts doubting again, he says, go ask him. Yes. Are you the one or should we wait for another? Amen. Why? Because John thought if I was actually, you know, that, you know, that was the highest place. Yes. I was for running the king. Yes. Look at who the person that for run the king. Where is that person? He's in chains. John was like, no, 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 if I go mm -hmm. I find quite If this person was actually the person I thought he was, I should not be in prison at this moment. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So he sent his disciples that actually didn't listen to that message of John that was still following him. Go ask him. Are you the one or should we wait for another? Are you the one or should we wait for another? Because John thought like my father told me that when the angel spoke to him, he said he will go in the power of Elijah. Amen. Even the father himself knew there was something different about the son. Amen. Also, the son came to a place he understood that about himself. Amen. He cannot be a forerunner and don't know your role. Amen. When they asked you, who are you, he said, I'm a voice in the wilderness. Amen. Preparing the way. John understood his place. Amen. So when he's in prison, he has cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. in what's called in psychology. He's like, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be entering the kingdom. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But Jesus replies him. He tells him, go, go tell him. Mm -hmm. The blind see. The, blind Amen. the lame walk. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Now Jesus had to tell John another part of when he comes. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Not just entering the kingdom, Amen. but there are some things also this Amen. king has to do. Amen. He has to heal the sick. Amen. He has to bring liberty. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. He's going with the gospel of uniting. Praise the wonderful Amen. name. Before he's crowned, 
Kuko must be healed. Amen. Jesus, when he met any blind person, he had to pray for him. Mm-hmm. Praise on the full name. Amen. Because blindness was something Jesus didn't like, Kabisa. Amen. Praise on the full name. Amen. So he tells John, tell John this. Yes. The blind are seen, the lame are walking, the Amen. captive are set free. Yes. That is Isaiah 61. Amen. <laughs> the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So God tell John that. Perhaps John received comfort with those words. Because we are not told what was his response after that. <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But now John knew he was forerunning the king. Praise God. Amen. Because when Elijah is coming, the king is coming. Amen. Praise God. But when you come to Matthew chapter, chapter 11 verse 13, it says this. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. This is Jesus talking. Because when Jesus is saying this statement, as we shared last Sunday, this was the end. <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. Amen. John was the last prophet. Yes. And then since he was in the spirit of Elijah, they are entering the kingdom. Yes. Praise the God. Amen. Remember my title, Elijah and the kingdom. Amen. Because when Elijah comes, the kingdom is coming. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Even in Revelation chapter 11, both Elijah and the kingdom are in the same chapter. Yes. Because after Elijah finishes in Revelation 11, 2 and 3, the seventh angel sounds and they enter the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Those two people are connected. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because after his testimony and his witness, there was nothing that could hinder these people from entering the kingdom. Amen. Because when Elijah is coming, Elijah number one is coming to judge Amen. apostasy. Yes. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. He's going to judge disobedience. Amen. And he's going to show these people who the real God is. Because by the time Elijah is coming, which is in 1 Kings 17, people don't even know who God is anymore. Until there has to be a contest on who God is. Before a people can reach this phase, it's a dangerous phase. That now we can ask who God is. I thought you should be the teachers of the Gentiles. But now I'm coming and telling you who God is. What happened? Praise God. Amen. And Elijah now is, that's the time Elijah is coming. Amen. Because Elijah is coming at a season where people have lost hope, Kabisa. Amen. They don't know even who their God is. Yes. They have prevented the covenant. The priests have lost their place. Yes. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. The priests have lost their place. Amen. That's when Elijah is coming. Yes. Idolatry, idol, as God was sharing with us, idolatry has, is full. Imeja, Kabisa, in that land. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then Elijah is coming. So when Jesus now is telling them in Matthew 11 that what went he out to see? Because another man, remember, for 400 years, there was a silence. And in those silence, they were waiting for two people. According to Malachi, three. And Malachi, four. They knew one thing. There's a messenger to prepare the way. That is Malachi 3. They knew another thing. There's a messenger of a covenant. Because according to Jeremiah and Ezekiel, there's another covenant that is coming. And Jesus is the messenger of that covenant. Praise the wonderful name. So they knew they were waiting for that. A person preparing the way and a messenger of the covenant. And the Lord whom they seek because they were waiting for a person to come with glory in that temple. Is going to come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. After a period of silence, of a period of time, which in fact was a prophecy. It was not just a coincidence that between Malachi and Matthew there was silence. It was a prophetic silence for the prophetic people according to the judgments of God. Amen. <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. But when the next thing you are hearing, all gospels begin with a man in the wilderness. Amen. They just begin with a salutation and they take you of a man in the wilderness. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because this man in the wilderness is preparing a way for this Messiah that is coming. Amen. This king, this son of David. Amen. Because the Israelites were waiting for the son of David. Amen. Are we together up to that place? Amen. So when John the Baptist is coming, they, didn't, they, 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 they had doubts on his identity. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The leaders can you imagine the leaders that are supposed to stand at the door and instruct our people even don't know? Until the, they were supposed to preach to people and say, He is John. He is John. Jesus is preaching and is telling the people, He is John. The Pharisees and the scribes were supposed to tell people, He is Elijah to come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. To put people under an expectation to receive the king. Amen. Praise God. 
But now when we come to Matthew chapter 11 verse 3, we realize verse 14, and if you will receive it, this is the Elias that was to come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now our condition was put in that place that if you will receive him, John was to fulfill all promises of Elijah. Amen. Amen. If they received him. Amen. Praise wonderful name. Amen. If they received John, then yes. every promise of Elijah, John could have fulfilled it. Amen. And they could have entered the kingdom. Amen. Praise Amen. wonderful name. Because when that Elijah comes, he restores the kingdom to them. Amen. He restores all things. Amen. What are, there's the land, they need to be restored. Praise God. Amen. There is the blessings, Amen. all the blessings in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. Amen. They need to partake of it. Amen. And when Elijah is coming, all those blessings, they are supposed to have it. Amen. If they receive him, but let me tell you, they did not receive him. Amen. As we saw it last Sunday, they did not receive him. Only a group that we said are called the little flock mm -hmm. received him. Praise wonderful name. Only a small group received him. Praise God. Only a small group received him. And this small group, Jesus said, Behold, it is the Father's good pleasure Amen. to give you the kingdom because of their attitude. Amen. I repeat, Amen. because of their attitude. Amen. God gave them the kingdom. Amen. They went all the way to the upper room. Amen. They were supposed to go forward with that gospel until again the apostate Israel rejected the Holy Ghost and God stopped it. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But they were going regardless of the disobedience of the people. Amen. But they reached a place in Acts 7, God stopped. And God was now coming to judge them. Praise the wonderful name. Because when Elijah is coming, judgment should follow. Amen. So when God is standing to judge, he is right. Mm -hmm. Because Elijah has come. Yes. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But when Elijah was coming, people doubted John. People didn't believe John. Not everyone knew John was that Elijah. Mm -hmm. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And these people... <laughs> They always, can you imagine as an individual, just as an instruction, you can always pray for something. You can pray for something. You can pray for something. Can you imagine how sad it is when God answers your prayer and you don't see it? Praise wonderful name. Amen. That, just as an instruction, as a normal individual, you have a desire that God do this for me. Do this for me. Do this for me. Praise wonderful name. Amen. And when that answer comes, you are blind again. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. That true God has blessed you. But somehow you don't have discernment to understand. Thank you and say, this is the faithfulness of God. Amen. God has answered that prayer. Amen. Praise wonderful name. Amen. But sometimes you realize now when God was answering the prayer of these people. Do you know how many people were praying for, for God to come and visit a people? These people were in desperation. Because these people are not living the promises that God had given them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And God is answering their prayer by sending Elias to them. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But their mental state could not receive. That is why they had to repent. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Their mental state could not receive the king that is coming. They had to repent. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And you realize now as by the time we come to Matthew 11, 13, God is telling them, Jesus is telling them, if if you would receive him, this is the Elias that is to come. If you would receive him, this is the Elias that you was to come. Can you imagine if they received him? If you were to speculate? <laughs> do you know they could have entered the kingdom? Yes. Praise wonderful name. Amen. But do you know Jesus could still have died? <laughs> because there were prophets about his death. Amen. Praise wonderful name. Amen. Even if they received John, Jesus had to die again. Praise God. Amen. Psalms 53 was there. Scriptures can't be broken. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. As pastor told us, Judas perhaps could not have hanged himself and could have gone all the way Amen. to become the Antichrist. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And unless these people could enter now the tribulation. Because the last seven years is tribulation. Amen. When they received Elijah, they entered the last seven years. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That is what could have happened if they received him. And it was the end, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. It was the end. Amen. <laughs> it was the end. Amen. If they received John, yes. I repeat, if they received, because the condition is 
This is the Elias that is to come. Yes. If you receive him. Now if they received him. Number one. They could enter into the kingdom. Praise the wonderful name. They could. Judas could rise if Jesus could not die. <laughs> Judas could rise to a place. To become the son of perdition. Praise God. Amen. And uh, Jesus could die, resurrect and go. And these people could enter into tribulation. But they'll be waiting for his second coming. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because now there are some scriptures about Jacob's trouble. That has filled in that period. Amen. The last, the seven, the last seven years. Because this is the last week of Daniel's 70 weeks. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Though there are prophecies that must be fulfilled at that last week. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So if they received Elijah, if they received Elijah, they could enter into the last seven years, which is the last week, which is the tribulation. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And when they enter into that tribulation, that's why you'll understand the gospel of grace is a mystery. No one knew that. Thank you, Jesus. No one completely Amen. 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 Jeremiah 3 37. Godfrey, you could find it for me. 30 verse 7. 30 verse 7. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. So if these people could have received John, there are some prophecies that must have been fulfilled. The first prophecy was the death of Jesus Christ, which was spoken in Jeremiah, no, in Isaiah chapter 53. And again in Jeremiah chapter 30. 30 verse 5 up to 7. Jeremiah 30, 5 to 7. Yes. For thus saith the Lord, which have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask Amen. ye now, and see whether a man does travail with a child. Amen. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, mm -hmm. as a woman in travail, Amen. and all faces are turned into paleness. Amen. Alas, for that day is great, Amen. so that none is like it. Mm -hmm. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, uh -huh. but he shall be saved out of it. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. It's a time of Jacob's trouble, but he's telling them, you shall be saved out of, you remember Matthew 24? Those that endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. You have to understand, if they actually they received John, that means they received the king. And do you know why Jesus would die? In fact, even Julius Caesar could kill Jesus himself. Because Caesar would be terrified of this king that is rising in another place. That's why you realize Jesus just had to die. God had to have to create another way that that scripture must be fulfilled. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Because through his death, the New Testament was going to be given unto them. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because they cannot enter the kingdom without his blood. They cannot enter the kingdom without a new birth. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And a new birth is water, blood, and fire. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. It is water, blood, and life. Praise God. Amen. So these people have to be born again Amen. to enter the kingdom. Amen. To enter the kingdom. Amen. They have to be born again. Amen. For them to be born again, Jesus has to die. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So even if they received John, Jesus could still die. Amen. They knew they, they, they had to partake of the cup of the New Testament, which was from after the death of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then they enter the last seven years. Now, the funny thing is, why have we come to that place? Because through, because we have come to that conclusion because throughout the Old Testament, we were not spoken. There was nothing about us. Amen. That's why you can ask me on Esmas, then what about me? Amen. If you are saying they're entering the kingdom, then what about me? Amen. Why am I seated here today? You are seated here today because they did not enter the kingdom Amen. and God revealed another plan. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. You are seated here today because Amen. one day when a man was moving from Amen. Jerusalem to Damascus, Amen. at the noon of the day, God came down from his glory. He met a man called Paul and said, Paul, I'm going to send you. From the time you were in your mother's womb, I told you for a purpose. Now go make these Gentiles fellow heirs. That is why you are seated here. Amen. That is why you don't keep their commandments. Amen. That is why you don't go to God through Israel. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But if we go to their books, we'll realize it was only seven years. Mm -hmm. And we'll be like, then what about us? Mm -hmm. What about us? Yes. 
What about us? But that was a mystery hidden God. That's the hidden wisdom of God that even Peter could not know. All the prophets in the Old Testament did not know. Praise God. But Jacob's trouble has been spoken about. The death of Jesus has been spoken about. All those, even the salvation of Gentiles through Israel has been spoken about through all those scriptures that has been written. Praise wonderful name. But me, as a member of the body of Christ, just saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, being baptized into the body, being an ambassador, being a resident of heaven, being a resident of heaven, but an ambassador on earth, me being a fellow heir with Jesus Christ, that in Christ I'm a new creature. That is something new. No prophet talked about it. That in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, I'm going to go up in heaven. No prophet talked about it. Praise wonderful name. But through Paul, from Romans to Philemon, Paul started revealing another mystery. It says a commandment from everlasting. He comes and says, by faith you are justified, not of works that any man should boast. You are saved by grace. Those are new things. Praise God. That by the preaching of the cross, Peter never understood that. But the preaching of the cross is power and wisdom unto me that you preach Christ crucified. All those things are new. It's nowhere in the Old Testament. It's nowhere in the Old Testament that these people that were unclean, these people that David could come and meet Goliath and say, you uncircumcised Philistine. But today there is neither Jew, neither Gentile. No male, no female. Because we are all new creatures in Christ. We are born anew. Let us put on the new man. Let us not be corrupted by another gospel. Praise God. But you are something new. God has a new plan for you that is outside the plan of Israel. But what we have been reading about Elijah and the coming kingdom is a plan of Israel. Praise God. And we have seen if they received Elijah, they could have gone to the kingdom. But somehow we looked at what about us? But God also had a plan for us. A plan that he kept secret. Even from the world since the world began. No one knew it. No one knew it. But Paul in Romans 16 verse 24 and 25 he says it was a commandment. It was a commandment Amen. from the everlasting. Amen. That was another decree. Oh, yes. That Thank was another Jesus. decree. Yes. That you, go to these people Thank and make them Amen. fellow heirs. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That now you could not come and wrote. You don't look for Elijah. Mm -hmm. You cannot come and start looking for Moses and Noah. Mm. And those who are, you are, they are not your examples. Yes. You look for them for instruction. Praise God. Amen. But you are something totally new under the sun. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we realize now if they could have received Elijah, the beginning of the end could start. And all the prophecies that are concerned with the last days, the day of the Lord, that in that day all those prophecies could be fulfilled if they received John. Praise the wonderful name. But they did receive John. And Jesus says in Matthew 17 that since they allowed John to suffer, also the Son of Man will suffer. So while you are still in that Matthew 17, are you getting something? Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Let us just give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Now in Matthew 17, these people which is Peter, John, and James. They know one thing, that Elias must first come. They know Elijah must come before the kingdom. They know that. But they go, Jesus takes them apart and takes them to the mountain. And in this mountain, they have an experience they've never had in their lives. Praise wonderful name. Amen. They see, we always say Jesus was transfigured before them. And Jesus put on a glory they have never seen in their lives. This was not the carpenter's son. Praise wonderful name. Amen. This was a man of power. This was a man that even his eyes was terrifying. His garments were terrifying. They all fell before his feet. And at that moment. And Elijah was there. Yes. And Moses was there. Yeah. 
this experience was something they even didn't know how they didn't have words for this experience but they knew one thing this is his coming that's the only thing they knew so when Peter says let us build booths or let us build tabernacles Peter is in the seventh feast because that is the last feast that is the kingdom feast these are people in the kingdom so Peter realizes wow we are in the kingdom we have arrived in the kingdom let us build feasts he jumped, even forgot to have not yet had Passover yet. He forgot that. So he's there, he said, we are in the last feast. Because they're from the first feast to the last. Do you know they're going to keep the feast of booths in the kingdom? Do you know that? So when he's asking, let us build these booths and these tabernacles, this person says, actually, we are in the kingdom. Yes. Peter was actually in the kingdom. I'm telling you. Peter was actually in the kingdom. Because this is what the kingdom should look like. But when they are coming down, they don't understand. So the three of them are asking issues. The kingdom can't come without Elijah. Amen. The kingdom can't come without Elijah. But here they have seen the kingdom and they have not seen Elijah. Now, Peter, as it were at that moment, Peter knew. Amen. That was the last moment. Now when they are coming, these people are, they don't know what is happening. They, when you can imagine Peter and John talking. But that pastor told us, remember that scribe when he was talking that day? He said Elijah must first come. They are just talking to themselves until one day to He can sumbua mpumota. He can sumbua tumfra. Perhaps wana teremu. I usually imagine it's like wana teremu. Wana teremu. They are just discussing one to themselves. But that day they told us the last must fast. Even they don't know the who, to, who said it, you know. They don't know it's Malachi that say a last must fast. They now say it is the scribes that say a last must fast. So they are having that discussions. They say Mimi, Victor and Tobias here, we are just dropping down and then we are having that discussion. But a last must fast. A last must fast come. Perhaps one day in their synagogues they had a sermon that we are steering today that Elijah and the kingdom mm-hmm. praise the wonderful name. Mm-hmm. Perhaps a scribe picked a book and said, Today I'm going to share to you about Elijah and the kingdom. And they left that place saying, Amen. Because now they realize now oh, it's connected. Mm-hmm. So when they are dropping, it's disturbing them. Because Peter finds himself in the kingdom. Because these are this is Daniel 7. Praise the wonderful name. Mm-hmm. This is Jesus receiving the kingdom. Praise God. Amen. But Elias is not here. So somehow while they are dropping, you Why then says the scripture that Elias must first come? Let's read it. It's in Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 17. Remember, we are talking about Elijah or Elijah and the kingdom. Praise God. So Matthew chapter 17, verse 11. Verse 11. Yeah. Yes, Matthew 17. Aha. Uh-huh. And this and his disciples asked him, Are we there together? Amen. <laughs> Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Now, for them to say first come, it means there's something that has come that should not have come before something else came. (laughs) So what was it that came? Was the kingdom Mm -hmm. that came. And Jesus in his own glory that John could say and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory. That glory was John in the Mount Transfiguration. Praise the wonderful name. So they say Elias must first come. I'm saying there are two things these people are waiting for. Every Jew is waiting for two things. A last to show them the Messiah. But they have seen something and they didn't see another thing. So they are saying, no, these, these things have an order. They are trying to tell Jesus, no, these things have an order. Why then says the scribes? You know, they could not say Jesus because what they saw, they could not deny it. Perhaps when, someone, when this story is being told somewhere, a person can deny it. But when you have an experience, it, it, it confuses everything you know. So the only people who try to make them being wrong are the scribes. 
because when you saw something and what I saw can't be eyes. Perhaps now what the scribes say, then we have to question that. Because what I saw, I saw something. Praise wonderful name. So why then says the scribes that Elias must first come? Because Elias must first come. It's not, it is a scriptural authority and a promise from God that Elias must first come. For them to enter the kingdom, Elias must first come. And Jesus tells them, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. He's affirming them. He says, you know, my disciples, you are right. Yes. Before I, the Messiah, becomes king, Elias must first come. He says, that is very true. That is what Malachi 3, Malachi 4 talks about. That is what Isaiah 40 talks about. Amen. About a person that prepares the way for this Messiah too. Come. So Jesus just affirms them. But I say unto you that Elias came already. You know, if that small text is picked and you preach it to an Israel, it will, it will, he will, he will cry. Mm -hmm. Amen. He will cry. Yes. Because Elias came already. Where was why? Where was I when he came? Because they know if they miss Elias, they miss the kingdom. They miss the Messiah. So, but I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not. But I have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man do them. They just did with the Elias that was to restore all things. They just trivialized his coming. They trivialized his coming. That is why Jesus in the five chapters later in Matthew 23 says, You will not see me. You will not see me henceforth. That is Matthew 23, 39. You will not see me henceforth until you say blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Because the last comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. To forerun the Lord Jesus himself coming. Amen. Praise wonderful name. Amen. So we realize now they did with him the way it pleased them until a girl could require his head. A girl. Praise wonderful name. Amen. Could just say I want a trophy. And the trophy that I want is the head of this man. Jesus is saying that you, that is what they did for him. Praise on the freedom. He said likewise. Likewise. They are going to do it. Likewise also the son of man shall suffer of them. Who is them? Who is them? Who is them? These are the religious leaders in that place. They didn't regard him. Praise on the freedom. They partnered with the, with the state in that time. And they killed Jesus. And as Pastor was telling us last Sunday, they chose another Jesus. <laughs> that was so dangerous. Let me not go there. <laughs> Praise wonderful name. Amen. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So you realize how John was a great prophet. Praise wonderful name. Amen. Because when John came, the kingdom should have come. The prophecy that God told Daniel, not Daniel, David, should have come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And he says this. Uh, there's a place I'm looking for. And I'm not getting it. There's a place that says, Elias shall come. And he's told. What is, I've just read it. Huh? Yeah. Verse 11. Oh, verse 11. One as few as Amen. So, John came. They missed him. They did with him as they pleased. And the kingdom, they didn't receive it. Praise God. Amen. And now Jesus turns it again and says, verse, this is Matthew chapter 10, verse 11. And Jesus said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all. Yes. Now that promise of Elijah was pushed again. Jesus says again, it's a future. For all things to be restored, Elias shall first come again. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. For that Israel to come to a place of full redemption and full restoration, Elias shall first come. Elias shall first come. Because they rejected who? John. 
so they couldn't enter the kingdom. And they cannot enter the kingdom until Elias first comes. Praise on the name. So again, every Jew is back to default mode again. Amen. To start afresh Amen. and waiting for Elias. Praise on the name. Hoping that this time, hoping yes. that this time, it will be different. <laughs> Praise on the name. Amen. Because again, if you, don't miss it again. Amen. Because now this is sin unto death. Mm -hmm. True. The next time you miss mm -hmm. is sin unto death. Amen. Because when you miss, the devil will be there to deceive you. Yes. Because the devil again is coming with Elijah again. Yes. Praise on the flame. Amen. We are going to see another Elijah that is coming. And this Elijah is another Elijah, a false one. Yes. You have to be so keen. Because now these people that are waiting for an Elijah, the devil is preparing an Elijah for them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because now they know they cannot see the king until they see Elijah. Amen. Every Jew, as I was reading a story when they are having a feast, they leave one chair or one chair empty. empty because they know it come anytime. And then they send a child outside as the prophet come. Go and look for the prophet as the prophet come. Praise God. All of them are waiting for that Jew, that, not that, that Elias to come. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. And they, they, when they are dropping, when you, you, the experience from that mount where Jesus was transfigured, dropping was a very big experience to these people. And when even Jesus is telling them about his death, when he's going down, they don't understand. They can't understand. Because ex just what I saw, and you're telling me he's going to die, and what I saw, that is, you'll find it in Luke. He said they, he told them of his death, but they didn't understand what he was saying. Because of the experience that they had. Amen. But we have realized that Elias must fast. Come. Elias must fast come. for the kingdom to come. Praise God. Amen. So it is something every Jew is waiting for it. Amen. That Elijah must fast come. come. Because Elijah is a promise for the nation of Israel. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Now let us go to this future Elijah that is coming. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because when this Elijah is coming, it ends with Israel in Revelation 20. I restored Israel. Praise God. Because this time when Elijah is coming, he shall come. When he's giving them a promise of Elijah shall truly come, he suspended that program. Yes. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So the promise of Elijah shall truly come is waiting for Israel at a particular time of God. Amen. And he began another promise with the body of Christ Amen. through the Apostle Paul. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But now Elijah shall truly come after the rapture. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. I repeat, after we have been gone away, Elijah shall truly come. come. Amen. Not when you are here on earth. No. Elijah cannot come while you are here on earth. Amen. No one should ever tell you he's fulfilling the promise of Elijah. Amen. And you are here on earth. No. Elijah comes to the nation of Israel because they are waiting for the kingdom. Yes. Praise God. And when Elijah is coming, they should enter the kingdom. But God sat down and began another program with the body of Christ. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That is does not include Elijah, Amen. does not include their Sabbath, does not include their promises, their laws, their covenants, does not include anything. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because God, Amen. God is not, God, God does not plagiarize. <laughs> they cannot plagiarize and bring it here. No. God is authentic. Yes. God is creative. Amen. God can, God is a creator. Amen. He can create something new. Amen. He cannot, he, he cannot run out of ideas. No. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So that when he's creating a people, he has to use an old an old blueprint for another people. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But these people are a different kind of people. Amen. These people are complete in him. Yes. These people grow in him. Yes. These people are saved in him. Amen. These people are accepted in him. Yes. These people are grounded in him. Amen. These people are, there is nothing that is going to separate them Amen. from his love. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because this unless you stop off the head of God. But you can't. Because it's just the head and the bow. If you chop off the head, Jesus dies. But he can't die. Amen. So you can't separate them. Yes. Amen. It's 17 things mm -hmm. of that might try to separate this new creature. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. From oh, his you, love. Lord. Not thank your love. Jesus. His amen. love. Jesus. Say, shall death, shall burial, shall pestilence, amen. shall this world, amen. the world to come. Amen. You are intact yes. in Christ. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. No Elijah could come and say you have to believe what he's preaching. In fact, you should preach to him about the grace of God. Amen. Because they don't understand the dispensation of the grace. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So when we are here for a period of time, until our times comes to maturity. 
and we are changed in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye. When the Lord himself, the only thing I'm waiting for is the Lord himself. They are waiting for Elias to show them the king. But me, I'm waiting for one thing. The Lord himself, the Lord himself shall descend the shout with the voice and with the trap of God. And we, which are alive, we which are alive, we which are alive, shall be changed in a moment. Comfort yourself with these words. That's what Paul said. Make these words your comfort. The only thing you are waiting for is he that died for you. He that by his grace you are saved. He that gives you the will to do. That's the only person you are waiting for. Praise God. And when he raptures you, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, and the end shall come. That is Matthew 24. When we are raptured, another program begins. We go to Matthew 24. What is happening in Matthew 24? The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. What does it mean? Elias must first come. Amen. Then the king comes. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. And then the end shall come. Now they are entering the last seven years. Amen. Are we here? Amen. No, we are not here. Amen. We are saved. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. We are raptured. Amen. Praise God. But now they are beginning their salvation. Yes. They are not saved at the beginning. Because they are going to be tested. They are going to be tested. And he that endures. He that endures. It's a refining. Malachi is going to refine them again. Praise the wonderful name. And in that expectation. In that moment. That now the world has changed. The body of Christ is no longer here anymore. Another program of God has begun. The devil is preparing an Elijah for them. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. I don't want to go into details of that whole period. But remember my message. Elijah and the kingdom. Amen. If you understood it, also the devil knew it. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. If we also could read the Bible and understand, aha, Elias must fast. God. Do you think the devil did understand that? Yes. If the devil wants the heart of these people, he has to come as Elijah. Yes. Amen. That's the only way he'll win their hearts. Yes. If you actually want their hearts to worship you as the Antichrist, you must come as a liar. Praise on the flame. Amen. So let us go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. Praise on the flame. Amen. This, this book has, the Revelation 13 has a lot of things, but focus on two things, right? A liar and the kingdom. Praise God. Amen. Because the, the book of Revelation 13. That's a lot of things that uh, I don't want in a peleke candle. Praise God. <laughs> Revelation 13 verse 11. I'm beginning to finish. Are we there together? Amen. Praise God. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. Another translation will tell you coming out of the land. And we know there is only one land. I repeat. There is only one land. When the Bible talks of a land, it is the land God gave Abraham. Israel. Praise the wonderful name. Yes. This beast that is arising is a Jewish beast. Yes. I repeat, it's a Jewish beast. It's a masculine. He said, and he yes. is a man. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Yes. Don't let the beast confuse your head and you feel like it is some monster somewhere. And you start thinking of something with a hundred heads. No, don't, don't, don't think like that. Praise the wonderful name. Yes. It comes from the land. Yes. And what land are we talking about? The Jewish land. It already tells you because when it says it comes from the land, it tells you the origin. It has to tell you, okay, it's the beast, but this is the origin. Mm -hmm. And the origin is the land of Israel. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. Now, does it talk of a crown? No. Does it talk of a crown? <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. But this beast is coming according to Psalms 55, verse. Godfrey, Psalms 55 verse, there's a verse 21. This beast is a lamb, praise the wonderful name, and he spoke as a dragon. Because the pastor told us this, that Antichrist has two faces. There's the man of sin and the son of perdition. Praise the wonderful name. There's false prophets and a false prophet. There's unclean spirits and a, the unclean spirit. When this one is the beginning, it's beginning as a lamb. Let me tell you, it will be arrogant at the end. It becomes so arrogant, but when it's beginning, it's pious. Because it wants to win the heart of the people. 
because the liars must first come. And when he's coming now and preaching the gospel, of, he wants to tell them, he wants to show them, behold, mm -hmm. this beast is going to preach, behold, yes. the lamp is going to show them a king. Amen. And he's a false king. king. Praise God. Amen. Because he knows a liar must fast. Amen. So he's coming as a lamp. Remember I've told you there's no crown there. Amen. And the dragon you know is the devil. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. You know in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. If I can read for you Matthew 7 15 as fast as I can. Did you get Jerome, uh, Psalm 55 verse 21? Yes. Okay. So out for me. Psalms 55 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But woe amen, amen. But woe was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. His words are soft. He's as a lamp, harmless. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Matthew 7 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. You don't go to them. They are the ones that are coming to you because they, 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 are, they are deceptive. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are ravaging wolves. Praise the wonderful name. Because that deception is going to come. In a, it's not something that is going to speak as a dragon. Remember, the dragon is the devil himself. It is the devil instigating this man to behave the way he's behaving. Amen. And he's coming and he's speaking as smooth as butter. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Because his aim is to win the hearts of the people. Yes. Praise God. Amen. So in, where were we? 11, 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, which is the land. And he had two horns like a lamp and spake as a dragon. And he exercised all power of the first beast. Praise the wonderful name. The power is not his own power. Praise God. Amen before him and cause the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first this beast is not about his own worship he's leading a people praise the wonderful name john says what what does john say are you the christ no but there is one coming after me that i am not worthy even to untie the laces of his feet and i must decrease that he must increase. When these people are seeing this beast, he is directing a people somewhere. He is preparing a way. Praise the wonderful name. He is leading a people to a place. Remember, I'm talking about Elijah and the kingdom. Praise God. If the devil is going to deceive these people, as Pastor told us about the miracles of the Antichrist, to delay. Who's deadly? Uh -huh. The first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Do you, do you remember what Pastor told us about that? Let me go on. <laughs> he had a wound. <laughs> and he lived. That is death and resurrection. But let me not talk about it. And he doeth great wonders. The miracles of the Antichrist. That by the law of the sacrifice, the supernatural is open to both the true and the false believer. Amen. Praise God. So he is coming with great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's another contest at Mount Carmel. Because he has to prove to our people that this person is going to show them is the real God. Because the Antichrist is going to sit in the place of God as God. So they have to prove in all ways that this is God. So he has to have a contest. Praise the wonderful name. And show these people that the one I'm for running is the real God. Mm -hmm. And is in the sight of men. This is not, these are not some, something happening in heaven. Mm -hmm. It's happening on earth. Yes. And he's calling fire from heaven. Amen. Why? Because he knows what Elijah did. Amen. And he's going to do the miracles of Elijah. Mm -hmm. To win the heart of the people. Yes. Remember, Elijah and the key. the key. If the devil wants it, he has to start from somewhere. Amen. And he starts with Elijah. Praise the wonderful name. Because he knows these Jewish people, all of them are expecting an Elijah. Praise God. And he deceives them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Praise God. Amen. So is he doing that ministry for himself? Is for a, another face of the same person. Mm -hmm. Remember, praise the wonderful name. Yeah. So we realize now this 
devil knows that these Jews are waiting for Elias. And he's going, he's coming in such a way that he's going to present an that's a face of the same beast. Praise wonderful name. And he's going to perform the miracles of Elias. Why? To deceive them. Praise wonderful name. And he's going to point up people to the son of perdition. And praise wonderful name. Because it is him that is to be worshipped. Praise wonderful name. It's just a face of the same man. It's just the Antichrist. Praise wonderful name. And he's moving to the next face. Praise wonderful name. And you realize now this anointing of the Antichrist that claims to be an Elijah. Every person that claims to be an Elijah is under the same anointing. Praise wonderful name. Is under the same anointing of the Antichrist. Praise God. Because there is the last person to claim as an anti as Elijah is the devil himself. <laughs> the last person to claim and say I am Elijah Amen. is the devil himself. Amen. Praise wonderful name. Amen. Be at the end. Praise wonderful name. Amen. But he's going to make a people before him under the same inspiration to say, I am Elijah that he sent. Amen. Praise wonderful name. Amen. Have we seen people like that? That have claimed to be Elijah? Yeah. Is there one in our country? Yeah. Was there one in the United States? Yeah. Has, there been, has there been several people claiming to be Elijah? Yes. Did Branham claim to be Elijah? Yes. Praise wonderful name. What was what anointing was in him? We'll find it in Revelation 13. Yes. So sad, friends. Yes. Praise wonderful name. Yes. Because the same and it climaxes there. Yes. Praise God. Yes. But it begins somewhere. It begins with people starting and saying he's going to turn the hearts of the people from and he's going to restore. Mm -hmm. Anything that is about restoration is Jewish. I'm not a restored man. I'm a new creature. Praise God. But when you hear of the reformation and the restoration of a gospel, you have, you have to say, what happened to God? That now after he sent Paul, the gospel died. And now Elijah is coming as a restorer to restore people to the Pentecostal faith. In fact, even the people is taking a people is a wrong place. <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. That is why it is so dangerous to claim an office you don't know. Praise God. These blessings are Jewish blessings. Amen. That beast, Elisema, he came from the, from the earth. And the land is Jewish. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And he's pointing a people to that's pointing a people to the Antichrist. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And the Antichrist has a crown. Do you know that? Let me read that in passing. Uh -huh. That's 13 verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns, ten crowns. Praise wonderful name. It climaxes with this person being king. Praise wonderful name. But it has to begin with a, an Elijah, a false Elijah, to point out people to the wrong king, a wrong kingdom. Praise wonderful name. And the devil watches it from time again because the devil knows. Can you imagine a Jew that understands Malachi? A Jew that understands Elias must first come. And he is there seeing fire come down from heaven. Tell me why he shouldn't believe. Saperilius time. Saperilius time. Tell me why he shouldn't believe. Has he seen fire? Did Elijah bring fire? Praise wonderful name. Amen. Has he seen miracles? Yes. Praise God. Amen. And then he says, he that, what happened? He says, any people that didn't believe him, he was put to death. It was like, so Jesus said this in John 5 or Matthew 5, that he that believes in me has eternal. Praise God. This person, as pastor was telling us, He's in every way going to be Jesus, the Messiah. Praise God. And if he's coming to be Jesus, the Messiah, even he has to speak like him. He has to say, I am the way. Yes. I am the truth. And I am the life. Mm -hmm. He has to come. If the miracles have been done, this one must be in an atmosphere that is so perilous mm -hmm. that if you deny that, you are going to be killed. And praise the wonderful name. Now there comes the endurance. Praise the wonderful name. There comes the endurance. 
there comes the endurance. It's a sad time for them because they know they cannot enter the kingdom until Elias must first come. So the Elias that shall come is in Revelation 11. Praise God of them. A true Elijah that is coming again. Praise God. They have to test the spirits. They have been taught that, that they should test the spirits. That we should not just look at any man like this. No, test their spirits. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we realize now, anytime we talk of Elijah, you have to connect with the coming kingdom. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And we are not waiting for a kingdom. Praise God. Amen. We are not waiting for a kingdom. We are waiting to go up. We are waiting for the rapture. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. We are waiting to go up. And when we go up, a true Elijah comes, the Antichrist comes, and he impersonates the true Elijah. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They enter into their own wars, their own trouble. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And now there is where now to him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. Amen. To him that overcometh. Amen. To him that overcometh. Amen. He said, if you, if, you, if, you, if you just die for me, you will not die the second time. That's a reward. He said, you cannot see the second death. Because now the, 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 it was about the, this is death and life. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And these people are going to come to a place that by deception, by sweet words, are for a runner that is false, they find themselves worshipping a wrong messiah, a wrong king, and a wrong expect expectation. But what are we saying? Elijah and the kingdom. For the kingdom to come, Elias must first come. And the devil already knows that. And the devil is going to deceive our people because he knows they are anticipating for that Elijah. And they are going, he's going to lead our people to worship the wrong king and have wrong expectations. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So it is a sad thing and it's a very crucial thing for a Jew waiting for two people Elijah and the coming king. Elijah. And the Messiah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And the Messiah comes at the last days. He comes at the last seven years. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So we realize we as the body of Christ. Because <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Yani itakuwa hivyo. Yes. It will be a sad time. It will be a very, very sad time. But by the grace of God, that is not our program. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. By the grace of God, Amen. that is not our program. program. They have God has given them the will and the strength to keep that. Amen. Praise the wonderful Amen. name. For you, you might look and say, wow, that is so tough for them. Amen. But they have the grace for it. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Somewhere in the Bible is written that God cannot tempt you with something that is greater than your own strength. Yes. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So they themselves, yes. perhaps God has empowered them. To live like that. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But we, our program is different. Amen. We cannot enter into the tribulation. Amen. All of us that are seated here, that are going to heaven, are righteous people. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. How did we become righteous? Because he imparted his righteousness to us Amen. by believing on him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That he became our disobedience, that we can be beneficiaries of his obedience. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That by his obedience, I can say, I am a more than conqueror. Amen. I am an overcomer. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But now our expectations as the members of the bodies of Christ is different from their expectation. Amen. Their expectation is an Elias to come and a kingdom to come. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But our expectation is to grow in grace daily. Amen. Oh God, to work with me. Oh God, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Amen. That's the expectation we want. You say, God, deal, work with me. Deal with me differently. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Paul says perfecting holiness. Amen. Growing in grace. Amen. That's our expectation. Amen. As we grow to towards our body change. Amen. One as few as honor. That's our expectation. Amen. So we realize it's so dangerous if you don't divide. Amen. Because if you don't divide, your expectations will be wrong. Amen. If you don't go to 1 Timothy 2.15 where it says study to show thyself a workman approved that is not ashamed Amen. rightly dividing the word of truth. Because the Bible has truth for Israel and truth for the bodies of Christ. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And if you take the truth that does not belong to you, you are going to frustrate your work as a Christian. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because you are going to be under wrong expectation. Amen. Praise God. And that's why we see God has a program for Israel and a program for 
we the body of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And when you go from Romans to Philemon, you find the program. Amen. You find what God had a burden and a desire for us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Paul never talked of an Elijah. Did he? No. Paul never called us the bride. Did he? No. Praise God. Amen. So our expectations are aligned. Our expectations are in a particular channel. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But what is the devil going to do? The devil is going to come in a place and make us preach another Jesus. And if you preach another Jesus, Paul says, it is not another Jesus. And when you preach that Jesus, you have to preach Elijah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Paul said, let me read that in, as I finish in 1 Corinthians or 2nd chapter 11. Because if you are going to talk of Elijah, you have to talk of another Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So that is in 1 uh, Corinthians 11 or 2nd Corinthians 11. Somewhere there. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Just move there with me. Second Corinthians eleven. If you're there, say amen. 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 Dano Mefika. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Paul says this, but I fear lest by any means. As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. For if he that cometh preached another Jesus, whom we have not preached, praise God, Amen. or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Praise the wonderful name. There are people that are preaching another Jesus. That another Jesus is the Jesus that belongs to Israel. It is not another Jesus. Praise the wonderful name. It's a Jesus. Paul says like this in Romans 16, 11, That we preach Jesus according to the revelation of the mystery. That's how we preach Jesus. According to the revelation of the mystery. Peter preaches Jesus according to the prophesied purpose. Because they knew a Messiah was coming. Amen. Me, you, in Kenya, in South Africa, wherever we were, we never knew a Messiah was coming. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But they, they knew unto us a son is born. The us there is the Israelites. Amen. They were ex under expectations of that Jesus to come. Amen. And you have seen for that Jesus, which is called another Jesus to come, Elias must fast. Amen. Praise God. So any person that preaches another and Elias first is preaching to you another Jesus. Jesus. That's not the Jesus that Paul preached. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. He says, bear with him. Amen. Pray with him. Just take time and teach him. Like Aquila and Priscilla. <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. Amen. When they found a man, Apollos, that was mighty in scriptures, yet there are some places he didn't understand. Praise God. Amen. Aquila and Priscilla bear with him. Amen. They sat him down and taught him dividing the word the right way. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So let us bear with people. But you have to understand the gospel of grace is simplicity. Amen. Paul says, let no one take you from that simplicity. Praise God. Amen. But if you are going to preach another Jesus, another gospel, which is the gospel of the kingdom, it has Elijah and the kingdom. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. But our gospel is Christ in simplicity. Amen. Believing the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Bwana asifiwe sana. Ningewasihi tusimame tunapomaliza ibada. Amen and amen and amen. Are you happy? Just give the Lord a hand of praise. Praise the wonderful name. By the grace of God he has taught us the word. Amen. We thank God for that. For all that he has done unto us. For enabling us to understand. And may our eyes of understanding continue being opened. Praise the wonderful name. Continue being opened. That you can see and you can know him. Praise the wonderful name. Let us believe and pray. Father, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, here we are as thankful people, thanking you for the greatest thing that ever happened to us, which is the grace of God. There's nothing as greater as it, but it's one that came and said, it is finished. What, do I, what am I supposed to do? To have eternal life, just believe. Just believe. By believing, I'm believing unto righteousness. By that faith, I'm justified. By that faith, I'm sanctified. By that faith, I'm baptized by one spirit. 
By that faith, I receive the Holy Ghost. By that faith, I'm a partaker and joint heir with Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you allowed us to gather here this morning. We've heard your word about Elijah and the coming kingdom. It is your word also, brother. It's your word, Lord. We've preached it to Jehovah, but it belongs to them. It belongs to your earthly children, which are Israel, O God. And we as your heavenly children also, we have our own plan. We have our own purposes, O Lord. We thank for both families. We thank for the families in heaven. We thank for the family on earth, O Lord. Because all of them came from you. All of which reveals of your mightiness. It reveals of you as El Elyon. As a possessor of heaven and earth. As we have been preaching on the plan of the earth. We are still talking of your attributes. As a possessor. As a man that is all possessing the heavens and the earth. And we've just talked of that plan of the earth. And also we as the members of heaven. We are also happy. We know oh God that we are blessed to be your children. Continue guiding us in your paths. Continue showing us the separations in the Bible. Continue showing us which belongs to us, which does not belong to us. May we not come to a place we frustrate the grace of God, but may we continue working in unison with God, in unison with your spirit as we grow in this body. Different members, different roles, Lord, may we work in unity. Unity because we understand somehow we are complete despite our weaknesses because that's who you chose you never chose strong people so you chose the weak we as weak people we are here may we appreciate our weaknesses may we forbear one with another as Paul told us forbear with him teach him sit down those people that don't understand it we thank you Lord we honor you may your word continue being exalted in our lives may the grace continue growing in our lives Continue being with us, continue guiding us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I do pray, trusting and believing. Amen and amen, amen. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. amen.